we've got a fair number of people here. I think we can get started. I found the link to the doc. So Daniel, I'm sending that to your DM. Um, let's see, let's see. Everything is a little, I'm a little behind today. And none of my buttons work. Okay, here we go. Okay. So let's see, do we have, okay. Um, I'm just looking at who all is here. Is anyone here from Risk? I'm just, I think that you sent me a YouTube link there. Uh, oh no, sorry, it's a Google Doc with a YouTube link in it and it just got things. things oh up. yeah, okay, I copied it out of um, <laughs> Tyler's new template that I'm all trying to well. save as well. Um, so let's see. Um, right. So nobody here from risk, it sounds like. Okay. Uh. I actually have, I actually have a quick update about the risk team. I spoke to Maya and they've uncovered the, they basically have an idea to create a neural network to encapsulate all the potential factors that uh, medical researchers consider uh, important when evaluating uh, if the article is like fake or, or not. Uh, and I, not just fake, but like actually relevant. So they have a list of like 10 parameters and uh, Maya is leading uh, wom uh, women only team for now, but she promised to include some boys in it. Um, and there is Kriti, I, I think Nikita, uh, one of the newcomers and, uh, and Maya, and they're trying to build um, a neural network to, to create some form of prototype for first clinical trials papers and basically showing some um, some idea demo of how it can be done on scale. Great, that sounds like a great update. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's see. So Daniel's capturing that very nicely. Um, anybody here from VT? Hello. Hi Dan, uh, there you are. <laughs> hey. Yeah, only a couple of updates. Um, me and Malavika are working on like skeleton code for how we're going to organize everything for the contradictory claims project. So we're chatting about that a little bit. Um, we're going to discuss with the annotators soon for the next round uh, of annotations for the project. Then with the immunology team, they're working on creating a knowledge graph. Um, and so they're using uh, some of the tools that Charlie Hoyt had made already, and they're chatting about how they do the named entity recognition based on um, proteins, chemicals, and diseases mentioned in text. So those are the big things. All right. Always sounds exciting on VT. Um, and complex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, we have pretty nice update from the refactoring as well. Uh, John did a bunch of effort on that recently and he's um, kind of done with his first round of it for round one branch. Um, and I, uh, this weekend I uploaded some data to the Dataverse. So we're getting that ball rolling as well. Um, uh, let's see, is there anybody here from Ties? Anybody who might, I don't see Christine. Um, but if there's anyone else on ties who knows what's going on. Have anyone interacted with Christine and Metro recently? No. Maybe we should follow up and, and see how we can um, help them or, or do something for that team. Because there was some exciting stuff happening with the filters for clinical trials data and extraction of uh, quantitative data like the actual incubation periods and transmission rates and things like that. And I think they got stuck somewhere in between. So maybe we can remove the roadblock somehow. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. So who, who should reach out to Christine then? Tyler, Let, let's hope he watches this video. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he will. So uh, hi, Tyler. <laughs> and we, we hope he'll reach out. Okay, um, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, 
um, Tyler was supposed to reach out to who? Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to get the title. The, the template is totally filled in. And so I'm trying to, to delete it while also trying to catch stuff while also trying to talk to my son. <laughs> Um, Tyler, uh, we'd like Tyler to reach out to Christine from Ties, just because Perfect. we haven't heard from Ties in a little while. And they were doing a lot. And so we just want to make sure everything is still okay. Um, okay. Um, Discovery Engine. I believe there is the actual Archer here today. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the, the major progress is we finally found a person that can help us with some web development on uh, the interface for literature review uh, product. Uh, that's Jack uh, from uh, New Zealand. And he got brought in by Bianca, I think. And we had a very productive call, which I think, um, you know, anyone that is interested in learning what is that first product that we're creating should check out. I sent it in general, like, a day ago or who knows how long ago but it's definitely there oh okay i found it uh saturday 11 a.m my time so it's there it's called team literature review for web development and it goes beyond just web development and actually explains all the things and current progress that we have with with the actual like discovery engine part and how we're we recently had a big, uh, you know, shift in terms of how we're going to integrate medical annotators. So um, we have, we finally have the Docana tool that is allowing medical professionals to uh, change the annotations of data. So yeah, moving closer to that uh, magical discovery engine idea. That's exciting. I tried a little Do Docana stuff too, but I didn't get terribly far, but it does, it does look really interesting. Um, let's see. Um, that's, that's great. So um, what about uh, search engine? Is anyone here from search engine? Or ontology? Okay. Anton can speak of uh, search engine progress. I think Lukash had some major progress and uh, have been finally wrangling uh, those like uh, hundreds of gigabyte machines that are processing something. Yeah, just chip in on, on the Lucas behalf. So uh, the team refactored the NR enti enti name entity recognition pipeline. And I think right now it's like that many hours already up and running. Uh, let me see what's the, the recent update. So like for the last week, there was some issues again on the way of refactoring the code. It took quite a while to, to, to get there where we are standing right now, but I think we are closer and closer to some, to, to be uh, ready for all of this daily rolling releases of COVID-19. We're still in the phase of, of doing batch processing. So after we're done with this, the next step will be to to have this incremental update, et cetera. But we're, we're in a good spot right now. All right. That's good news, it sounds like. Um, so I see, I don't think I see Isaac here, but is there, is there anyone to, uh, to discuss ontology? Actually, ontology just has question marks in front of who, who gives updates for ontology. I thought it would, for some reason, I thought it was Isaac, but. Actually, ontology is one of those teams that never formed, but it makes sense conceptually. Maybe let's remove it from the list for now until we actually, you know, reach that mental stage of recognizing this is a team and we, we have it because we kind of have it, but not really. Like okay, it's, what it's about ontology types different. of papers, which seems like it's kind of so a subset. This one is the one that Christine, Imran, and Kriti, I think, worked on. Right, that's who is This is the classifier to detect types of uh, medical papers, like clinical trials or not, and beyond. Okay. Um, so I did mention Isaac, so what about patient forecasting? The latest I heard was from Serge, uh, epidemiologist, and he told me that they're very close to actually 
formulating some uh, paper for publication and he actually wanted to, to, to use our literature review um, as, like infrastructure to make literature review before uh, ideating the research paper, which is so me meta. And I wish we actually had a user interface for him to do it, but I'm pretty sure we can do it uh, manually. So that's the last thing that I heard, unless anyone else has heard something. Okay. That does sound like useful information. Um, other than that, uh, I mean, a lot of the other things that I haven't already requested say Slava, and I don't see Slava here, but anybody who works with Slava who might be able to give updates on uh, data management related stuff. Anton. Oh, right, Anton, I should, yeah, I should know that. Okay, okay, <laughs> hold on, I need to check it. So we moving really fast in the data, uh, infrastructure and so we arthrology mentioned the kana tool is up and running we finally nailed the uh, the issues with aws not letting us sending sign up emails etc i think a couple of teams are already start using it in the better phase and so far it works there are still some issues with the kana itself but uh, luckily, the, the, the people, the maintainers of the Kana tool, I think they're a team from Japan, they are actually responsive to pull requests. And some of the pull requests from CoronaWire members already got merged upstream to the Kana itself. So impact of CoronaWire is way beyond only just like our members or who kind of work with us but even some other open source projects as well. Uh, so in addition to the Kana, other, there are some other interesting changes we're doing on infrastructure end. More and more people start using our virtual machines and uh, we start thinking about like how to make that process slightly more streamlined and easier for like regular member of the community to launch some service on our infrastructure because right now everything is done manually. So for example, if you want something like the Kana, but your own runs on like something.labs.coronaway.org, it requires like actual person from infrastructure team to set up like an Apache server for you. But we are looking into do something more kind of like more easy to do just regular member. You, you log in, do a couple of comments, boom, you're already up and running your, like, your web app or some service, some API endpoint is already now a server. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the main updates that uh, should go to public. There are a lot of other interesting actions, but we need to figure it out, like the, the pass forward over there. So again, I'm happy where we're standing right now and the momentum we're having in the right direction. Um, yeah. Oh, another direction like our Dataverse, right? Since we're grabbing all of this data from public GitHub repos, et cetera, et cetera. We actually, like since COVID-19 is such a hype topic, we got quite a few uh, like files already got into the dataverse and our data hub team, the data curation team, like no way they're going to kind of go through it effectively. So people like we definitely need more engagement from volunteers for data hub channel. And so far we kind of slowed down parsing GitHub for, for new data just because of that. And we already have enough data sets to kind of start working with it, like data mine it, etc. Yeah, actually the data sets thing, and uh, I'll have to jump in five minutes, uh, but the thing that I want to include, we actually, we are kicking off a new team, a new project, which is internal to Corona Y, and it's called, um, it's called Team uh, Social Analysis. And it it is basically an initiative to, um, that formed on request from historians, economists, and the goal is to overlay the COVID-19 data over historical Hispanic flu pandemic data 
and do potential forecasting for the purpose of handling second and third order consequences in terms of the socioeconomic crisis. So basically understanding things like which jobs need more help or like which jobs won't exist or like how we can help society deal with all of these things that we're not even experiencing yet but are going to be crushing the actual economy. So very important task, very long term, very impactful and slightly away from the medical stuff in, in certain you know, ways, but uh, not less impactful. So this also will be an interesting experiment for us because this is uh, really a, a first try. Can you mute the force? Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, a first attempt to show the external world that Corona Y is not just about medical stuff, but we're actually capable to uh, help all these external entities, policymakers, and others wrangle the data, understand the consequences, and actually put all of the possible dots on the map for relevant experts to analyze and connect those. All right. So um, since, since you said you had to jump in, in a few minutes, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to, to add before you do that? Uh, there is so much actually that I would prefer, um, I'm gonna send an email and uh, that email, and I will probably record a quick video update because uh, I'm a YouTuber now. So <laughs> I'll send that and it has a lot of updates, including the fact that we're gonna speak at JIT conference and deliver a 1.5 hour workshop about you know whole like on management and everything that we're doing here then we got accepted into second conference the actual sci nlp then we're going to talk about open science and how we're building infrastructure for that and um yeah just so many things i need to structure all of these things and and, and package them oh all right. and the other super important part we're actually forming a nonprofit entity hooray Yay! <laughs> it's happening we're not just a bunch of random uh, people together we're we're an entity so the, there are many purposes why we're doing that primarily because we need to integrate with the real world and we even to get more like uh, cloud credits and, and things like that and for companies to help us more efficiently we have to exist in terms of like uh, corporate governance uh, doesn't mean that we're becoming that, you know, corporation, you know, but it, it like legally we are going to be corporation, but that's going to be nonprofit corporation. Uh, Apologies. So, uh, go ahead. For interrupting. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, so uh, so uh, since the Slack subscription would be ending soon, uh, which uh, platform would we be using? So we're testing multiple platforms. We have this giant spreadsheet of all possible protocols to use that all kinds of uh, security hackers came up with. And we're looking for multiple alternatives. We are exploring metrics.org as a way uh, to use open source, encrypted and hopefully reliable system. But we're still probably like a month away from, from migrating anything because there is just so much tied to Slack that we can't afford to, to tackle this in, in a rush. So yeah, I was talking about the nonprofit entity. We're actually creating that right now and starting the process. Uh, Ogali is helping uh, us with the 1023 form and actual like 503 and random numbers that I don't even understand. But yeah, uh, I would appreciate if uh, we had some form of call to action to figure out how we can improve this process and all the people that have uh, some experience with it uh, for them to, to join us in, in this uh, Herculean effort to make sense of the, the nonprofit structure and governance and foundation, hopefully, to push the boundaries of open science. Because we're entering this post-COVID world and we're changing like the purpose of our existence and not changing, but like adapting. Because what really matters now, like we're 
exiting the COVID pandemic and entering the world of post-COVID consequences and the open science issue that got uh, uncovered during the pandemic is worth uh, pursuing just for the sake of preventing future pandemics but also for the benefits of humanity and making sure that we can potentially help um, not cure cancer, but at least better understand cancer, better understand Alzheimer and all these uh, diseases and different uh, medical issues and not only medical issues that are being, um, let's say, roadblocked by the lack of transparent and open science. Yeah, some of that was actually, hi everyone, it's been a while. Um, some of that was actually my update, but you articulated a lot better than I probably would have. Um, but in short, it would be great if we can have a call, especially with people who have experience uh, establishing a nonprofit in the U.S. just to get some input. Um, I've gotten to a point now where I understand all that is required, and I've kind of started digging to see how we can um, pull all the documents and things together. Um, but it would still be great to have a call and just uh, like dedicated just to, just to get some insight from everyone. Else. All right. Well, ugly. I was going to ask for comms update, and your name is prominently listed for that. But um, I see uh, Daniel, our scribe, needs to needs to tune out. Um, I could take over for Daniel if you if you wanted to say anything, though. Um, no, that was that was basically my my update. I've been MIA for um, quite a bit, so this uh, I kind of want to. This is my like catching up. Uh, but that was the only update I had. Well, great. Well, good to see you again. Um, and since uh, since we are, I guess, running up against it, I, I still, you know, anyone who has to go, it definitely, um, you can certainly go. But is there any, uh, are there any other questions or any other things that folks wanted to bring up at this meeting? No? All right. Well, I think that we can adjourn and uh, see you all soon. All right. Good to see bye everyone bye. later. Bye, Thank guys. Bye-bye.